All right, Shalom, all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechah, Kodash. The Lord, honor to the apostles and elders of the great millstone that rule well, and they bring the word and doctrine, Shalom, and in peace, and that being to the elect of the nation of Israel. With the Israelites coming once again to prophesy the return of Yahweh Shai, Hamashah, to the world ignorant that calls Jesus Christ, and the return you know, of rulership that's righteous, contrary to the world, or the rulership of this world, which is impure wickedness, abomination according to the scriptures. But the Lord appointed it for his purpose. So we'll start in Ephesians chapter 4. We'll go through that. We'll filter some articles in a prophetic lens. And we'll flow in the spirit from there. And this is Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavouring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Right, so that means there's, there's always many camps. You know, but what does it say in Corinthians? It talks about there need to be heresies among you they which are approved may be made manifest among you. So there needs that someone needs to be right and someone needs to be wrong. You know, you can't have conflicting opinions, conflicting beliefs, conflicting doctrines, and everyone be correct. But that's a lot of the now when you read scriptures like this unity, unity of the faith, unity of the spirit, man will use that scripture to try and justify, you know, being walking side by side with someone they disagree with. You know, or having conflict within the doctrine. You know, which is confusion. Confusion means with mixture. And it's written that the Lord is not the author of confusion. I think it's 1 Corinthians. In fact, I'll try to Because the Apostle Paul sp spake on that. Yeah, there will be heresies. But the point is not that all the heresies are correct. You know, it's the point that them which are correct may be made known by the fact you know, that they outperform the heretics. Right, 1 Corinthians 11. I believe it's verse 18. First Corinthians 11 and 18. It says, For first of all, when you come together in the church, which all the church means is the gathering. You know, it doesn't mean that you're going to have to live in a great building. But first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there'll be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. For there must be also heresies among you, the day which are approved may be made manifest among you. Right, so there has to be people that are going off to prove who's going on, as it were. And the unity is the doctrine. You know, it's in Psalm 133, which speaks about how beautiful it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. People again will try to use that scripture to say, look, we shouldn't rebuke, we shouldn't reprove, we shouldn't come to any understanding. You know, when it's written in here, contend for the faith. If you're just going along to get along, you're not contending with anything. You know, there's no battle. It's not that you're out looking for a battle, but if someone's going off, you have to correct it. That's going to the scripture. That's right, but that's, oh, that's, uh, that's showing love. Open rebuke right. is better than secret love. Right. Okay. And it tells you in um, Leviticus 19 and 17 that thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart, thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. So rebuke is in juxtaposition to, to hatred. And so people say, why are you rebuking him? Why are you showing him hate? No, we're showing love, you know, but this world again has perverted that. Pervert means to take away from truth. It's Proverbs 5 and 1, it says, My son, attend unto my wisdom, and bow thine ear to my, uh, my understanding. So if a brother's telling you, it could be cool, you know, it could be coming in a camping, it could be fiery. If he's coming out the scriptures, you know, if he's being consistent, he's not showing hypocrisy, he's genuinely rebuking you, how can you get mad? You know, it says, rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7. For unto every one of us is given grace, according to the measure of the gift of Hamashiach. Right, and grace, we need grace. You know, we're not under the law, but we're not in a, in a position that we're in the new covenant. So we need grace. You know, guys will talk about that we're in the new covenant. You've got a whole, you know, the, the bug out collective, like a new, like, as if it's a hip hop group or something that they all agree, you know, that GMS is wrong pretty much. You know, but there's there's different uh, contentions among them, and then you've got the, the the new covenant camp. You know, it seems 
And these that are talking about you, we need grace or we would have grace in the new covenant. If we're in the new covenant, why do we need grace? And if you're in the new covenant, how are you still slipping up? You know, you can't keep the Sabbath day, but you're in the new covenant. And you're still subject to death as well. <laughs> saying that they're, they're immortal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Right. The new covenant, an everlasting covenant of what? Everlasting life. That's why it's an everlasting covenant. You know, because them that are blessed with it will not be dying. You know, so we have the down payment. What does it say? The, the unction. But we don't have the... We're not in the new covenant. Say it like that. There's no way you can still have fleshy thoughts and be in the new covenant. You know, the new covenant is having that changed. You know, being changed. That we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. You know, when did we get changed? Romans chapter 12, verse 3. But I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Right, because you know each and every individual has a different measure of faith, you know, and that's why it's important to have that humble mindset, okay, and not you know get lifted up by pride, okay, because knowledge puffeth up. That's right. Uh, verse four: For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Hamashiach, and every one members one of another. Right. You know, it's, it's the the status thing or something of the world which is order you know we're not neglecting or i'm not neglecting to say that order at all but if you had a body where the head was a head the neck was a head the shoulder was a head <laughs> the chest was a head your foot was your head you know it's not going to work man <laughs> you're just going to be rolling everywhere but the same way you know if everyone was a knee you know so every it, it's, a, it's a collective effort man you know and people are, brothers who come from all different experiences all different walks of life that they're going to be able to bring something beneficial to the truth more time you know from a different perspective still going by the scriptures you know, but certain opinions, certain backgrounds are going to be different naturally. You know, that's life. But as long as we're unified in the spirit and the doctrine, that's what it's about. The repentance and taking correction, you know, where a brother may be more experienced in a certain walk or a certain, you know, topic or something on, in the truth. And that's what it's about. You know, edifying it needs to build up. You know, we're not already pre-built. It's, it's, it's not one of them, um, you know, IKEA ready, things. <laughs> you know, flat pack, you know, and you, it's ready to build. You know, the flat pack is true. You know, we've got the truth and we build up through that. You know, we don't need any, any, this is the instruction manual as well. You know, we don't need any extra curricular things. You know, none shall want her mate. That's right, and that proves balance as well. You know. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what? Is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Wait, hold on. If you're descending into the lower parts, you've got the resurgence of the hell doctrine coming back. You know, so what does that mean? The lower parts. You've got guys that literally believe, they believe, yeah, with the Israelites, yeah, this happened, yeah, that happened. Yeah, 70 AD, that's when we start scattered. They know all these. You know, the deep knowledge, truly. And then it comes to hell. You know, and they can't see that it's death, that it's a pit, that it's the grave. They believe there's some underworld, you know, possibly a red man under there with a, with a pitchfork. You know, when they know the truth about the red man on top of the earth. You know, it's ridiculous, truly. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, the son of the heavenly father Yahweh, mm -hmm. let us hold fast our profession. Right, a profession in the world is seen as a job, you know, an occupation. Well, occupation is to be occupied in prophecy. Our profession is professing the faith of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. You know, that also goes into the testimony. Right, the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. You know, so we're looking again, looking at these things, for example, articles, brothers going, you're filling it through a prophetic lens as you're going into these scripts. You know, we know things are written a far time, we're written for our learning. We need to be patient and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So that's why we do it. That's right, that's how we measure the time diligently in of itself as well. Okay. Again, fill in current events through, through the scriptures. Okay. And even the, the smallest <coughs> you know, article, the smallest move is a, is a big move in the Lord's greatest scheme. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 26. Mm. For such an high priest became us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. 
who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the people's. So that's under the Levitical priesthood, that's mm -hmm. what the priests would do. They'd offer up you know, daily sacrifices, daily atonements, you know, first for their own sins and then for everyone else. Now it's going to tell you something, and this proves reincarnation as well in this next verse. You know, he says it, he doesn't do it daily, you know, first for himself and then the people. For this he did once to it when he offered up himself. Right, so he did it once when he offered up himself. Why? Because he came as Solomon. And sin. He came as Adam and sin. You know? The fall the fall of Adam, that's why he also talks about the the first Adam was made a living soul, but the last Adam a quickening spirit, if that's how it phrases it. So like it. Yeah, but that proves that. You know, second Samuel seven about uh, David you now having that son and that rulership lasting forever, that's your Shah. You know, if if he sin, he'll be beaten with the stripes of the children of men, something along those lines. Well, Yahweh did that when he was, he was put through that affliction, that torture, you know, prior to being put on the cross. You know, so that it. Did you get from verse twenty six again, brother? Okay. Verse twenty six: For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the people for this he did once when he offered up himself so like i said then first for his, the people then for his own sins the oh. levitical priesthood it was first for his own and then first for the people so like right. uh, verse 28 for the law maketh men high priests which have infirmity but the word of the oath which was since the law make of the son who is consecrated forevermore. Right. And you have to believe that. You have to believe that Yahweh Shai is on the right hand of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, making intercession, making mediation for his elect. You know, we pray that we're of that number. Right. So was, so like, and pleading our cause as well. You know, kind of, when we're slipping up, I guess he's making that mediation. As you go into the law, what happens if you defile the Sabbath? You, know, you get cut off from your people. You can you get put to death. You know, picking up sticks on the Sabbath. What happened to my man? Put to death. You know. So we need that that mediation, that intercessor. You know, and the law the law is perfect, but the not the law never made a man in the flesh perfect. You know, the law itself is perfect. The law is holy. But we you know we're stuck in this flesh. We need someone to to mediate that for us. This is Sirach 36 and 1. It says, Have mercy upon us, O Lord God of all, and behold us, and send thy fear upon all the nations that seek not after thee. Now, we know there's many nations among Israel. We read in Ezekiel 37, it talks about no more being two different nations, you know, under the kingdom split under Solomon. You know, which that's another heavy you know, topic to get into. That technically, it was King Solomon, you know, who, who was the incarnation of Yahweh Shai, that the nation split on. You know, so that's why it's perfect again that he's the one to reconcile the nation of Israel. And so you have two nations in that sense, you know, southern kingdom, northern kingdom, tribe of Israel, tribe of Judah. And each tribe can really be considered a nation. In uh, Genesis 49, Ephraim and Manasseh, you know, talked about a nation and a company of nations will come of thy loins. You know, so that proves it again. Well, all, the only nation that's going to fear the Heavenly Father is them of Israel. You know, but it's not going to be everyone. So the first Passover... In ancient Egypt, all the Israelites got redeemed. You know, in this new Passover, in this new Egypt, it's only going to be the elect of the nation of Israel. You know, and all the lands where we've been scattered. It's not just going to be in Babylon the Great. You know, that new Sodom, that new Egypt. But these are the things we're hoping for. And this is why we need a Messiah, why we need an intercessor, a mediator. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Hamashiach I right, said so the Lord's chosen teachers that's all of them offices and what does it say apostles apostle means to be sent and then prophet prophet means prophesy said before evangelist the Greek word for gospel is eongelion that's where you get the term evangelist pastor you know to tend to the flock and teacher someone that well, that's, that's been someone that teaches, but they're all, all in office of teaching. And the, the point is for the edification, you know, for the perfecting of the saints, you know, to get the elect 
to where they need to be. You, know, you always have on every you know, great team, you, know, you have the basketball coach, you know, every fighter, every fight team, they have, you know, they have a coach, they have a mentor. You know, so it's a, a principle of a body, a team, you know, a team effort. And this truth is a team game. You, know, you judge on your own performance, but really it's a team game. You know, because your own performance, like we brought out earlier, is rebuking your brother, getting onto it, you know, exhorting, teaching, edifying. You know, we don't just do these videos to listen to ourselves speak. You know, Lord willing, there's someone that hears it and it, and it becomes edifying for us. It's a team game, you know, but at the same time, you're running your own race. Verse 13, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of the Most High Power, Yahweh, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Hamashiach. So again, the unity of the faith. The unity of the faith isn't... I, I know I'm an Israelite. You know you're an Israelite. You believe that the trees you know, are what we should worship. I believe that the Heavenly Father is what we should worship. Let's be friends. You know, let's preach together. That's not unity of faith because you believe in a different thing. The unity is unification. You can't be unified believing a different thing. As, you know, it seems, it seems good. It sounds good. You know, to the untrained ear and eye, unity camp. You know, 50,000 men in the street preaching a different... It seems like the same thing. We're all saying with Israel. Yeah. You can't really go into too many precepts. You know, if someone comes up, you know them 15-minute rotationary ones as well. And you've got the main speaker. He's speaking, speaking. And then the, the next speaker comes on. These guys believe different things. Confusion, man. You know, so unity of the faith is if those brothers behind closed doors, you know, or even out in the open, we're, we're coming and having a so-called debate, you know, contending for the faith, and then the ego being put aside, when someone's right, they're right. You know, and that's unity of the faith. It's not, but a lot of them debates are for money. You know, guys are selling their merchandise on the side, which there's nothing wrong if you want to sell your merchandise, but don't bring that into the ministry. You know, you can have your own business or whatever on the side. But you never saw, you know, your house I preaching and then going, all right, you get 50% off on my, you know, my carpentry or my secular skills. You know, it's, it's confusion again. When, when money gets involved, you know, things get sticky. The love of money is the root of all evil. You know, there's nothing wrong with money. When you start mixing up, you know, extracurricular things, again, it can muddy the waters. And this needs to be living water, pure water, you know, undefiled. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. Now I beseech you, and the word beseech means to beg. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord, Yahushai Hamashiach, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind, in the same judgment. That's right. You know, so, you know, we all have to have the same, you know, doctrine and speak the very same thing. Okay. Because, you know, if you, one person speaking or teaching it, the MOTB is something like Christianity or the embargo. All right. And then the individual next to you is saying it's, it's the RFID micro C hip. Then, you know, that's, that's confusion and it's not healthy. It's not sound doctrine. And I've never seen that happen verbatim, but I've seen groups. One teaches what, what it is, the charagma, truthfully, and one is deceived on it or deceiving people or both. You know, and they're stood next to each other. The question hasn't necessarily come up, but it's the principle. Can two work together except they be agreed? You know, speaking the same thing. How many scriptures speak on speaking the same thing? You know, that one, Philippians 2. Now I remember there's a, a good, there's a good couple of precepts that go into that, man. You know, so it's not, it's not fair to the flock. You know, if I came up and I, I didn't know anything and I'm asking you something and I'm asking you another thing, that's confusion. There's no order in that. You know, Jake's, Jake's problem is lack of order. You know, let all things be done decently and in order. Yeah. Romans chapter 16, verse 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. Why are you scared, brother? Why are you running? You're not scared. It's called avoidance, a biblical principle. Right. You know, Apostle Paul, who was deep in this, you know, spoke on this. So you're not deeper than Apostle Paul. That's right. And the word mark, the Greek word is a scope, which means to, you know, put a, a scope on them, to observe them, to see, mm -hmm. you know, to, you know, basically, yeah, mark them, see where they're going off. Zoom in, get them spiritual crosshairs, man. See if it is what it is. That's right. There's also a scripture that talks about mark them that have, has the doctrine correct. You know, so you follow them, so you mark, you, you're, you're observing. You know, it talks about, I think it's Malachi. It's your job to discern who is serving the Lord and who is doing it in, in sincerity and truth and who is doing it deceitfully. 
You know, the spiritual speak on curse be he, you know, who doeth the, the work of the Lord deceitfully, that hold back his sword from shedding blood. You know, guys that don't want to rebuke, they don't want to, you know, cause them um, to ruffle any feathers. You know, it shouldn't be your intention that, all right, I can't wait to ruffle feathers. You know, but if it has to be, it has to be. You know, there's no, there's no point in holding back. You know, when it's time, it's time. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14 that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head even Hamashiach and so it says um, you know, who has the mind of the most high or you know, who has that mind we have the mind of Hamashiach. You know, so that's what we're working towards. I can't remember where that's written. You know, but we have the mind of Hamashiach. That's what we're working towards. You, know, you can't put this truth in a worldly box. You know, you'll never please the world if you're being sincere, if you're being true on this truth. And the, the book tells you that. You know, the book that is lauded and paraded around about as if these people really believe it. You know, it's the metric of all morality. When we start following it, what you you allegedly, you know, you Kemites will say, they pushed it on us as well, if they really did, why does it condemn you know, the acts that they did? But anyway, when we start to apply the morality to our lives, then it's a problem. You know? So if you truly believe in it, you will, you will get separation. The Messiah taught that. You know, but these same Christians, they don't believe that. You know, is it not written that the Messiah said, I came not to send peace, but a sword. And what does the sword do? It divides. It cuts. You, know, you don't get a block of cheese, swing a sword at it, and it's united. You, know? you have different sects of the cheese now. Right, it's been severed. <laughs> That's it. And the Lord is severing, you know, unrighteousness from righteousness. It talks that in the law, be ye holy, for I am holy. And it talks about being being able to put a difference between the profane and the holy, between the clean and the unclean. And truly that is our discernment, that is our lot, that is our office as priests. You know, going into that priestly kingly order, as Yahweh Shai, and the priesthood of Melchizedek. You know, is, is it not written in the Exodus? 19 and 6, if you will obey my word indeed, yeah, you will be kings and priests. And the same thing Peter reiterated that. You know, kings and priests, and it's clear that that was for Israel. A chosen ethnos. Where did you get the term ethnicity from the word ethnos? And now it's not based on an outer appearance, but the point is that it's the, the idea of, of nationhood. A holy nation, a chosen nation. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 20. Brethren, be not children in understanding, I'll be in malice, be ye children, for in understanding, be ye men. That's right. You know, when you first come into this truth, you know, <clears throat> you know that um, old man, the old woman, okay, yeah, he's, you know, you put that away, okay, and then you, you grow as a, as a babe, all right, you grow in the grace and, you know, wisdom and knowledge of the scriptures, okay? all right, through the Holy Spirit. And the Apostle Paul said, I die daily, I die daily. You know, so you have to renew. Right? The idea is putting off that old man. You know, so before you were in the truth, you had demons on you. You were the old man. You were the adulterer. You were the you know the witch, the this, the that. You know, whatever you were on. But then you have to put that away. You know, we become that's the idea of born again. You know? Born again isn't just dunking yourself in some flint Michigan water and thinking all oh, your sins are done away, but you, your lifestyle, your behavior, your conduct maintains the same level of wickedness it's about you know, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word and right? not just hearing the word but doing it right. Ephesians chapter 4 uh, and verse 16 from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love this i say therefore and testify in the lord that you henceforth walk not as other gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind hold on to the, the other gentiles walk so the ephesians are what are gentiles but when you check in ephesians chapter 1 and verse 1 it says paul and apostle yahweh hamashah by the will of the most high to the saints which are ephesus and to the faithful in Hamashiach, Yahushua. You know, so the saints, you go into that word, in the Greek it's Hagios, you know, and you go into Psalm 15, 5, 
This is where sin, this is outlined. Gather my sins together that made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Well, who the, who the covenant, who is the sacrifice is for? The main sacrifice is Yahweh Shai. He said, I am not sent but into the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Gather my saints together that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Romans 9. Who are the covenants for? The covenants, the glory, the service of the Most High, the law, the giving of the law, sorry. You know, all of that, Romans 9, 3 through 5, it tells who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption, which is the buying back. The saints, uh, Psalm 148 and 14, he also exalted the horn of, as I say, the horn of all his, of his saints. In fact, let's pull it, let's pull it, let's pull it. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints. So Psalm 148, this again explains who the saints are. Psalm 148, 14. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even if the children of Israel are people near unto him, praise you, Yahweh. So the saints are the Israelites. You can't read anywhere in the scripture. To get an understanding of the Gentiles, you go into the Old Testament. Or get an understanding of the saints, you go into the Old Testament. You can't read anywhere in the Old Testament it's referring to non-Israelites. Now you can try going to the New Testament and say, well, these Gentiles, they're called saints, but that, that doesn't work. That's a circular argument for trying to prove that these are non-Israelites. Because we'll go into the text. The, the whole so-called New Testament is based on the Old Testament. That's what plantation Christianity doesn't understand. You know, so the law, when it talks about the law, it's talking about the Old Testament. When it's talking about the people of the Lord, it's talking about the Old Testament. When it's talking about certain things in history, you go back into the history, it's the Old Testament. All of it is there. Uh, so you can't now superimpose some, you know, not, what do they call it, eisegesis, the one where they just, you know, use it without context. You'll get on us for using it out of context, but you'll never go to the context of the word saints. You know, it's confusion to the, the other Gentiles, you know, it's talking about these other churches. So the Corinthians, the this, the that, and the Corinthians were bad. You know, the Corinthians had a lot of, a lot of ill, you know, within them, that's why they had long hair. And then the woman teaching the churches. They had all manner of disorder. That's why it's one of the longest epistles. They got First Corinthians and Second Corinthians, and they're both lengthy letters. You know, so the other Gentiles is talking about these other Israelites in a Gentile state of mind, and that's what Paul was. He magnified his office. He was sent to the Israelites who were behaving like these other people. You know, and Paul was well equipped in Jewry, you know, to to be able to deal with that office. He called himself a Pharisee of the Pharisees. So he knew all about it. You know, but. It was about bringing back, not putting the whole law upon them straight away, but bringing them back little by little. That's how you learn best. Romans chapter 1, verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of Yahweh is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of the Most High is manifest in them, for Yahweh Bashim Yahushai has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even the eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, they glorified him not as Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, neither were thankful. But became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. What does he say? Anyone man among you is wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. The wisdom of this world is foolishness to be held by Shemi That's right. Verse 23 And change the glory of the uncorruptible power into an image made like to corruptible man, and to, his, and to birds, and four footed beasts, and creeping things. To go into idolatry to try and make something that the heavenly father has already created like a tree you'll form it into something else and go oh this is a god that is the most idiotic thing you know to go one's own way <laughs> that you can you can do you literally saw the tree there before you formed it you watched someone form it you know and now you believe this has got power of gods in it you, know, and you can't any any other god except you how shami how shy is a devil you know, and right. I'm talking about gods of these other nations. Psalm you want to get technical? So yeah. like, Psalm 96 yeah, and 5. Yeah, yeah. The gods of the nations are idols. The Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai created the heavens. Perfect. You know, now you can have Israelite men, the Alahayim, the angels. They're referred to as gods. I'm talking about in stuff you can worship. You know, stuff that people will, will uh, reverence on the level of the Most High God. Anything other than that. Even if you take an Israelite man, even if you take an angel and you put him on that pedestal, now it's an idol. 
you know. You can take money, there's nothing wrong with money. You know, you probably use money <laughs> in your day-to-day -day life. You know, to get the bus, to fill up your tank, however, you, you know, you need to travel, you need to work, you need to do what you need to do, you use money. Now, do you set up a shrine, stop worshipping it? You know, do you put your morals out of the window in, in acquisition of that resource there? Yeah, I hope not, because that becomes idolatry. That's why the love of money is referred to as the root of all evil. You know, it can cause the, them in the faith to err, to go in error. But uh, idols, the worshipping of idols not to be named is the beginning, the cause and the root or the end of all evil. And why? Because money can also become an idol. So the true issue, all today's issues are due to idolatry. Due to the law of Yahweh Bahasham Yahushai not being carried out on earth. And we could even give carnal examples where people, non-believers, would even agree. But it's not really about that. It's about it's about the law. You know, it's about the law. When that's in, in place on the earth, you, know, you will see it a different earth. And we pray for that day. Leviticus chapter 26 verse 1 You shall make you no idols, nor graven image, neither rear you up a standing image, neither shall you set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it, for I am Yahweh, your power. If I may just make a quick side note on that. Okay. People say like, oh you can't have any pictures, you can't have any pictures in your house. You know, even in Islam you can't have that. But the, tr the true intention of that, it tells you that to bow down unto it, to worship it. You know, see, so oh, you can't have a family photo of your grandma and your this and your that and your hat. Well, you can. Are you worshiping it? No. All right, it's cool. You know, but you're not allowed to set up, you know, landmarks to bow down to. Not landmarks. You know, graven images. Ephesians chapter four, verse eighteen. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart and in mind who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness but you have not so learned Hamashiach if so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Yahushai that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man which is corrupt, as according to the deceitful lust. Is it the first finish? That first, that first. Oh, nearly. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah, it was, but then, yeah, 23. So, um, so the conversation, conversation doesn't just mean how you talk as well. Really, it means conduct or behavior. That's best how we'd understand that word in, you know, the, the time it was written in English there, you know, for example, 1611 has a different, even then, certain words in 1611, the initial King James Version being released, have different meanings to the redaction, you know, 1769. Even then, you know, the etymology, the, the truth study, when you get into that, certain words change, you know, in meaning, in sounds, so on and so forth. So to take from 1611 to today and think every single word is going to be the same, you know, you're sadly mistaken. That's why the apostles, starting with the apostles, we push, teach. Sorry, teach the words, learn the words, and teach the words as well. You know, going into this, in fact, let's let's get the word for a conversation, prove the point. Going into the Latin and the Greek as well. Right. You had the, the Vulgate, the Latin Vulgate, which meant the Vulgar, which is the, how the common people speak. You, know, you might hear, that's Vulgar language. Like, for if someone says, fuck, that's Vulgar language. Vulgar just means common, you know, of the common people. So it's not, it's not noble, darling, to speak in such a manner. You know, so you got the Vulgate, which is around the, the 5th century, if I'm not mistaken. It came out under Jerome. You know, the Greek, obviously the kind of Greek, which is what a lot of the New Testament, even the Septuagint, a lot of the, the Hebrew, or the Hebrew text, or the, sorry, the Old Testament text, which a lot of it now is in Hebrew, is the um, West Leningrad Codex. But also you can go into the Septuagint for that. You know, we prefer to go to the Hebrew, because we're Hebrew, but also getting an understanding of the Greek language. Is, is a beneficial thing to study in the scriptures. So the word for a conversation, the bark each other. Okay. Taking a while to yeah. if you say let's have a conversation, you know, you're, you're on about speech. When you go into the the older definition of conversation, you know, it's a bit wider than that. But again if you if you just take the word on on the 
it's a skin deep level, you know, you don't get the understanding of what the scriptures actually contain. Another example would be the word Mark. You have the name Mark, you have the name Mark like Scopeo, you know, you have the name Mark or the word Mark like Charagma. So certain times you read the same English word and it'll be a completely different English word. A complete, you'll read the same English word, it'll be a completely different Greek word, excuse me. Or the, the Hebrew word Mark, is it uh, Thawar? You have for, th 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 for exemption, gotcha. you have uh, Kwai Kwai, would be the Charagma equivalent. You know? So when, when you begin to look into that and you think, oh, it sounds like that, you go into this as a root, you begin to get an understanding. You, know, you build your uh, linguistic spiderweb, which is good. You know, we're, we're never meant to... This scripture wasn't intended by the Heavenly Father to be read in English, or understood in English and never go into the older languages. Now, we're not saying we have an understanding by any means of the Hebrew and Greek fluently, you know, but knowing certain words certainly does help in bringing out and extracting some greater depth on the meanings or the intentions of what was written. Nice. I'm not working. No. Right, so you're going to have to take that as a homework. You know, maybe we... Jake is lazy. You know, so look that up. We're probably preaching to the choir. You know, but to anyone that's not aware of this, you know, look up the word conversation in Ephesians 4 and 22. And, 22. You know, and you'll see. Ephesians 4 and 22 that you put off concerning the former conversations, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after the Heavenly Father is created in righteousness and true holiness, wherefore putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbour, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not, let not the sun go down on your wrath. Why are you all so angry? Well, especially when you come into it first off, you find out, oh, this is my heritage, I've been deceived, this is this, this is that, this is that. Of course you're going to be angry. It says be angry but sin not. Well, now as you begin to be more you know, seasoned in this thing, you can maybe cooler, be more temperate, you know, but there's nothing wrong with coming fiery. Exactly. You know, and if certain topics and things don't make you fiery, you need to examine yourself. Sorry. That's right. Scripture says, surely a pressure maker the wise man mad. That's right. But guess what? A gift destroys the heart. So if you've taken a bag, you know, you might not get mad. Again, there's a there's a difference between you know being complacent and being seasoned and understanding well, this is the will of the Lord. You know, and you can see that. When someone that's nonchalant, doesn't care about and that's basically someone that's been being brain dirty. They'll say we're brainwashed. Well that's good. I don't want a dirty brain. I don't have your brain dirty. Have it washed with the living water of Yahweh Hashem Yahusha. Have it washed with the living water of the Holy Bible. Nothing wrong with that. Verse 27. Now they give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good. So that's an example of the old conversation. So your conversation before was to be a thief. Now your conversation should be to work, you know, be a... Be a a, a beneficial, a valuable member, you know, of your community, say it like that. You know, not that we're looking to build up, you know, in the society, but you, you should be a profitable member, at least to your family. You know, it says, he that provideth not for his own, especially day of his own house, denied the faith and is an infidel. A man that just want to sit about all day, you know, do, do nothing, you know, that's, that's useless. What good is that? And from a young, you know, where's that in the law? Uh, he, oh, he just does this, he doesn't provide, he doesn't do anything. You know, he just eats all the food up, you know, he munch Cheetos all day, you know, didn't, didn't provide any value. You get put to death, you get taken to the elders of the city in the scriptures, and you get stoned to death. You know? And that's, that's a great problem, a lack of um, industrious men. <laughs> you know, it, it, that's why you see Jake on the block, because you know, he's not hard working, he doesn't have anything to do. He, doesn't, he does have stuff to do, let's not make any excuses for him, but he doesn't do it. You know, is there obstacles in the way, of course, but Jake chooses that easy way. You know, that easy way out, becoming a sorcerer. You know, we're preaching against that, and we're, apparently we're the devil. We're the worst thing to society, but you can have drill music, you can have, you know, adulterous and adulterers, you know, running rampant, teaching your children how to commit adultery more effectively, how to be sneaky, how to be, 
you're <laughs> disgraceful. But if we say, well, no, stop adultery, stop being a, a sorcerer, you know, come back to your house by Shami Al Shai, we're the worst thing on earth. That makes you question. <laughs> let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Verse 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And that's, that's dealing with how your doctrine. That's not dealing with if I say shit, if I say fuck, that's not corrupt communication. Maybe it's harsh language, maybe it's off-putting to certain people. Maybe I'd look around my environment, think about where I am, who I'm around, before using it, but at the same time, is it defiling me? No, when, that's what your I said. What, it's not what goes into a man, talking of unwashed hands and dirt. It's what comes out of a man. He wasn't talking about so-called swear words. He was talking about the... He went into it, you know? Um, do you mind finding that, Baba Kishwa? 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 6. Oh, no, but where your I said, it's not the, that which goes okay. into a man. It's that which cometh out of him, which defileth him. And people try to say, well, that's why you, you can eat pork. That's why it doesn't matter about the law. It's written in Baruch 4 and 6. Is it Baruch 4 and 1, I believe it is. This is the book of the commandment of the Heavenly Father and the law which endureth forever. And so the law doesn't expire after a certain day. You know, the law will be enacted in the kingdom of heaven you know, with judgments, with statutes, with consequences. You know, This is going to show you that corrupt communication, Yahweh explained what that was. and He didn't say you know, speaking harsh language. How should I call it? Herod the Fox? He called certain Pharisees, Sadducees, Vipers. Or was that uh, John the Baptist? No, but these, the, is that not harsh? You know, to compare a, a, a human to an animal? He called that woman a dog. You know, that's that's harsh in some people's eyes. But he never spoke on. He never spoke in um, support of adultery, in support of witchcraft, emulations, so on and so forth. Uh, that which cometh out of a man, or that cometh out man, teaches the defile. I will listen to that video on the way up. You know, if someone commits adultery, and then you say, you know, an, un, an unsavory word, does, it, does that mean the Heavenly Father is going to judge you along with the adultery of Father? Matthew chapter 15, verse 10. And he called, Yahushai, the multitude, and said unto them, Hear and understand, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man. Now that's, it's in the context of not washing your hands and having dirt on your hands. It's not talking about eating pork, eating shrimp, eating lobster. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth the man. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father Yahweh hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. So if you're if you're offended at a stumbling stone and a rock of offence, Yahweh shall is referred to. As blessed is he that is not whose servant shall not be offended in me. If you spake against Yahweh Shai, they were saying, Oh well he's going off there. You, know, you have to wash your hands. Guess what? You've just defiled yourself because you're adding unto the law. That was the problem. There's no problem with having you know, certain traditions. Certain traditions are righteous. It was Apostle Paul who spake on um, keep the, I think it says traditions, but he uses another word. The traditions as you were taught by us. The problem was they were making certain traditions of the Pharisees as if it was law. They were putting it on the same level as law. That's where they were going off. It's written, you should not add to the law. Neither should you diminish up from it. You know, if you add to the, the, the book, you know, the plagues will get added into you. Take away from it, the plagues will be added into you. That shows the severity as well again. See how should I explain it? It's not that, it's not the, the, you know, the dirt going into your mouth. It's what, what you're saying. The dirty stuff is in the corrupt communication, which again is in, con in contrast or speaking against, speaking contrary-wise to what the Messiah is teaching. That's corrupt communication.
You know, not just because you say the S word. Second Corinthians chapter 11 verse 6. Mm -hmm. But though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly or thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. And that says, I believe the word is idiotes, an idiot in speech, but not in knowledge. Yeah. So we all speak plainly. No, we're not trying to speak like, you know, you, you, what do you so, call it? Se cemetery. What do they call it? Seminary. What do yeah, they call yes. it? Yes. Something sem seminary schools, cemetery schools, as Apostle Tar calls it. Other Apostle Tar, you know, where you go to learn how to die. He that walks out the way, of, he that wanders out the way of understanding, let him remain in the congregation of the dead. So it's called a seminary school, you know, because they try to you know, teach you some nonsense. But really, it's a cemetery school because they teach you how to die. That's right. You know, different brothers have different, you know, spirits. So some might come off more. You know, austere, right? Some a bit more, you know, calm. Some more, you know, eloquent speakers. But either way, right? The truth and knowledge is being taught to edify, right? No matter how it's being, you know, projected out. You know, Jake, when they come like a girl, man, it's not, it's not what you're saying. It's how you said it. Well, just come on, man. You want everything, everything to be on a nice, you know, little spoon. When your, your lullaby is playing in the background. Reality is not like that all the time. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Yaquab their sins. Right? So if you you know, get offended, alright, well then, you know, tough. <laughs> Screw. Screw. Alright? We have to, you know, warn and preach to our people, right? The so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the true biblical Hebrew Israelites, as well as the Israelite foreigners, speckled birds, right? That you ought to repent and turn back to your power, Yahweh Bashi Okay? And if you, th if you think us telling you this is harsh, and when the Heavenly Father does real life judgment, that's going to feel a lot worse. You know? The Heavenly Father is sent forth, the you know, warnings, is it in, the in the form of preaching the gospel? You know, telling you what's coming on earth, telling you to repent, telling you to go back into the law. You know, of course, we're not going to keep all of it perfectly, but striving, having that faith, coming back to your Heavenly Father, coming back to your power. You know, that's seen as harsh, because the brother might say it in a way you don't like. You know, but when real life judgment starts taking place, you probably be thanking that brother. You know, if you talk to, you, again, what does it say, a wise man, you know, when he's corrected, he'll love you. But a scorner, a mocker, you know, he'll hate you. Now this is a, in a parable, but it still proves the point. This is Luke 19 and 20. It says, And another came, saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin, for I feared thee, because thou art an austere man. Thou takest up that thou layest, laid, laid not down, excuse me, and reapest, and thou didest, so, didest not sow. So this was talking about the, the certain nobleman. You know, he gave pounds to his servants, and he said, Right. You need to go gain by trading, which is a, which is symbolic of taking his truth. Now learning what you know, and like I was talking about earlier, the linguistic spiderweb, right? So now I know lab. Oh, it sounds like labab. Is it linked? Yeah, it is. And you can go into this la. Da, da, da. That means unto. Da. And you begin to build it up like that. That's how you meant to do this doctrine. And you learn. All oh, right. So so the the dragon with seven heads and ten horns represents you know the NATO of the EU. You go into that the Roman Empire. Okay. So that means the fourth beast there. And you can begin to do it like that. Yeah, but this guy's saying, well, I knew you were austere. That's why I didn't do what you said, <laughs> which is ridiculous. And he even goes on to say, you know, well, out of your own s mouth, will I judge you, you wicked servant? But that proves, you know, Yahweh Shai is austere. Yahweh Shai is that certain nobleman. And in that parable, you know, he went on and says, my enemies, bring them hither and slay them before me. All right, so when Yahweh Shai comes back, he will be getting busy. And that's according to the gospel. This is the gospel. Everyone will, everyone's a Christian until you go into the Bible. That's right. That's why it's written, you know, be not hearers of the word, but be doers of the word also. You know? And these people don't even hear it. They just use a title. It's just a prop. That's all it is. You know, they're, they're the same people. They're the first ones to demonize us for reading out the book and doing what the book says. In a Christian country as well.
Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of Yahweh, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bit bitterness and wrath and anger and clamour and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be you kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as the Most High Power Yahweh, for Yahweh shall I say, has forgiven you. Let's sit on that chapter. That's what it says in the Lord's Prayer as well. And you forgive them the sin or trespass against you. As, now, if you want your trespasses to be forgiven, you have to forgive them the trespass against you. We're striving for, for perfection, but we're not perfect yet. Or at least we're not perfect in the flesh. Through faith, you know, we're trying to be made whole. That's what Yahweh Shai said a lot of the time. You know, but through your faith, your faith has made you whole. That's right. Faith comes by hearing. Romans 10. You, know, you can't hear without someone preaching the gospel. It's Romans 10 and verse 14 says, How then should they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how should they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how should they hear without a preacher? And how should they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Now again, they'll read something like that in the church. But what is Habashah? What is the good news? What is the doctrine? They're the same you know, people that have been afflicted. They're in mourning, it speaks about in Isaiah 61. Now they will have a kingdom, a chance of rulership under a righteous authority. Now, and as much as we speak on the, the judgment you know, coming upon the earth, all nations will at one point you know, be happy or will be rejoicing at the rulership. You know, the fact that it's righteous, the fact you'll be able to breathe truly clean air in itself is a <laughs> beyond an upgrade from this place. You know, the land Sabbath will be kept. Just deal, dealing with certain things like that and how to deal with the planet. You know, the animals won't be overworked. And what we put in, like how you see certain, what is it, the, the fish farms, the chicken farms, battery hens, so on and so forth. Uh, like 10 chickens in like a, a, a centimeter squared. It's ridiculous, man. You know, so everyone's going to rejoice. It even talks about in Romans how all creation groaneth, you know, is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of the Most High. The sons of the Most High, Yasha Allah, he is a prince of the power. And the whole earth truly is waiting for the princes of the power to be risen back up to their initial estate, that first time glory. Yeah. So we have to fall to learn, you know, the wickedness, as the true God understands, but, you know, the knowledge of wickedness and the knowledge of righteousness. Yeah. And that's the angle the serpent was sort of playing on, you know, but he was trying to do it in a, in a deceptive manner. You know, the Most High knows good from bad. You know, at that time we were as children. You know, all, all you know when you're a child, you just know my parents told me this, this is what I did. You don't even think, you know, a child doesn't really think about the concept of a lie. You know, they just think, they just see things as very, that's what it talks about, be, be men in understanding and children in malice. You know, a child doesn't understand or shouldn't understand, you know, the concept of a lie even. John chapter 10 verse 33. The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, because that you being a man, makest thyself the most high. Yahweh shall I answer them, Is it not written in your law? I said, You are gods. He called them gods, unto whom the word of Yahweh came, and the scripture cannot be broken. Psalm 18, 6. I said, You are gods, you know, but you would die like men. That's the princes of the power. Because at one point, you know, we are, we are the, um, it says that in Revelation, that I am of thy brethren and thy kinsmen, or thy, thy brethren and thy fellow servant, that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai, the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship, how does it say? Worship Yahweh for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. The one. You know, and he, he was bowing down to the angel. He's saying, well, don't bow to me. Yeah, I'm, thy, I'm thy brethren and thy fellow servant. So truly the Israelites are what? Angels in flesh. If you want to get technical, an angel is what? A messenger? I think it's John 1 and 2. It talks about, it uses the term messenger 
And when you go into that word messenger, it's the word angelos, which in other places it's written. Same word in Greek is translated as uh, angel or messenger. That's that proves it. The Israelites are angels in flesh. And that word for angel in Hebrew is malaah, right? Khan. That's Khan. So it means a message, we've got a message, we've got a message, sorry. that's a messenger. So if you bring in the gospel, if you're an evangelist, uh, an evangelist is talking about a, a, a good angel. You, Angelian, EU, if I'm using this correctly, EU, in, I don't mean the European Union, but I mean the prefix in Greek means good. You know, an angelion is going into news, message, messenger. So a you, Angelion, evangelist means a good news bringer. You know, so you're, you're an angel. You're a good angel. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I mean. Anyone calling them an evangelist, you say, are you an angel? They'll be like, what? Well, technically, if, they, if they're being truthful, if they knew the word, they'd have to say yes. Yeah. They're bringing a the message. And that's what it's about, about bringing the gospel. But again, as the brother said, you know, we had to learn wickedness on this side. And we'd know righteousness and we'd be able to appreciate it truly when the kingdom comes. So 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord, Yahawashai Hamashiach, and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, bless you, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that day of Hamashiach is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, and that falling away was us going you know, through what we went through under 70 AD, or 68 to 70 AD. You know, when we fell away from our land, then in turn, our heritage, our culture, you know, our laws, that's what it is, our cult. That's it called, yo, Israelites are a cult. Well, yeah, it's a culture. You look up the word cult, you know, it's a certain way of worship, homage. So, yeah, do we worship? We worship Yahweh, why Yahweh Shah. Christianity is a cult. You know, they worship so called Jesus Christ. Uh, Islam is a cult. They said they worship Allah. Or they have reverence for Muhammad. You know, they hold him in high esteem. That's all I mean by that. The Jews, well, that's a cult. You know, they worship again, who they call Hashem. So all these religions are a cult. Yeah, we're a cult. It doesn't mean, you know, when people say cult, it's got the, the negative connotations. That's what they try and play on people's emotions. That's all it is. When you think cult, you think of someone that, you know, is on some wickedness like killing babies or murdering people. That's not what cult means. Cult, the same thing you say, cultivation. If someone's cultivating a land, you don't think, oh my gosh, my man is evil. You know, he's, a, he's in a cult. He's a cult leader. You know, the, the head farmer, someone that's managing a farm, is the cult leader, the leader of cultivation. Again, it's the, the necessity of understanding words, especially when they're trying to play you, you know, with the word magic. The witchcraft of words, which is one of E's favorite, you know, tactics in demonization. The word cult, from Etim Online, the noun from the 1610s, goes into worship, homage, a sense now obsolete, 1670s particular form of system of worship from French cult, from Latin cultus, care, labor, cultivation, culture, worship, reverence. Care is a, you know, so we care for the Heavenly Father, we labor for the Heavenly Father. Are we wicked for that? <laughs> this is uh, Acts chapter 24 verse 14 in the NLT. Yeah. But I admit that I follow the way which they call a cult. What? What? <laughs> I worship the God of our ancestors mm -hmm. and I firmly believe the Torah, the law and everything written in the prophets. There you go. That one, yeah. So that is the, the word there I think is a, it really means sect, but in certain translations it's translated as a cult. You know, so the, the Pharisees were a cult, you know, they were worshipping. They weren't worshipping the Heavenly Father in spirit and in truth, but they were worshipping the Heavenly Father, a lot of them in deceit. Or you know, how does it say, uh, if someone preached the gospel of envy and strife, you know, a lot of them were, were going into that. A lot of them were trying to do it. You know, some of the, you can imagine there were sincere people among all these different camps. You know, Pharisees, Sadducees, the Essenes, the Nazarenes, you know, they were all shown different things and they genuinely believed it. The same reason we believe now, you know, there's, there's sincere people in all different, you know, Israelite camps, you know, and, and dece the deceptive people, you know, people being malicious in all of them as well. You know, that's natural. That's natural and that's spiritual. Philippians chapter 1 verse 15. Some indeed preach Hamashiach even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preached Yahushua's intention, 
not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my problems. And so back then, you know, you had you had everyone denying you have a shy, and it was rare to have someone say, "Yeah, we believe," you know, because he was on the scene. Now you have everyone saying they believe in your shy, but it's rare that someone's doing, you know, as they, as your shy taught, as he said, you know, and that's that's what we're striving for. So you're gonna have a lot of the Pharisees, the Sadducees, you know, the, these different people back today, but they might. They might just call themselves Israelites. They might just call themselves Christians. Yeah, Israelites that believe in Hamashiach. You know? But they're going to blend in. They're not going to follow it in, in sincerity and in truth, as the scripture said. It talks about them crept in unawares to um, spy out our liberty. They're trying to bring us back into bondage. There's going to be them. There's going to be all these characters among all these groups. Because there's a little thing called reincarnation. Which simply means again in the flesh. So if you believe Yahweh Shai, if you, if you believe Yahweh Shai was in you know, one type of flesh, then when he had to ascend into the heavens, he had to put on a different type of flesh. That's a reincarnation. Now that, in its simplest form, I'm not saying he came back and came back and came back. You have to believe in Adam, you have to believe in Solomon. No, but you have to believe that one spirit can go in two different types of flesh. And once you accept that, it's a slippery slope. And you know, once you start piling on the scriptures, who is this um, Elijah? Who is John? Elijah. Elias has already come. You can't get around that. But he came in the spirit and power of Elijah, bruv. Okay. What does it mean when he says he is Elijah? And that's just a little one for Psalm 51. Jude, verse 4. For there are certain men, crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Oh, that's what, so, so I have to cut your foot. There's certain ones that are ordained to win and certain ones are ordained to lose as simple as it is predestination predetermination everything down to the second is already set up in the spirit ungodly men turning the grace of our power into lasciviousness and denying the only lord power and our lord Yahushai Hamashiach okay. so certain people are brought in to this faith to this knowledge to be condemned ultimately and it's best that you would, you'd never heard of it. You speak so much you never heard of it. That you return to your folly as a dog returns to his vomit. Now, better it be that you'd never heard it. Because you know, now you've got a, you know the truth. You know? And if you know better, you better do better. To him that knoweth that it is master's will and doeth it not, you know, to him belongeth many stripes. It's like Luke 12. Luke chapter 12 and verse 40 it said be ye therefore ready also for the son of man cometh at an hour when you think not and it speaks it comes as a thief in the night you know it's revelation 3 and 3 revelation 16 and 15 you know keep your garment don't walk naked you don't know when the lord's coming so it's best that you're always on point when you sort of clock out, you know, you do you do your worldly folly and then you go, oh yeah, the Lord, I remember now. You know, because he'll come in an hour you don't expect. And the Lord's going to have ordained certain people that were on it, you know, and then they, they leave out. And w as soon as they leave out, the Lord comes back because they weren't expecting it. That's why you better stay good. Verse 41, Luke 12, 41. Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us or even to all? And the Lord said, who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler of his household, to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. So you're not going to be blessed, you're not going to be blessed, if you, you desert the, um, the Lord finds you doing folly, the Lord finds you off, the Lord finds you losing it, you know, when you need it to maintain. That's what it's about, enduring to the end. The analogy I like to use is a hundred meter sprint. You said Bolt never stopped at 90 meters you know, and succeeded and got a medal. You know, it, did, it did not finish. You should never have run it. If you weren't going to finish it, why did you run it? And that's what it talks about as when in, I think, this chapter, counting the cost. Now, no one sits with a tower and thinks, hmm, I've got five bricks. I'll be able to do this. You know, or I don't know how many bricks I've got. I'll be able to do this. Count the cost. Think, oh, shit, I've only got five bricks. It's only going to get, you know, 12, 12 centimeters tall, there's no point. And stop. 
and you need to run the race. He said, Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of the truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler of all, over all that he hath. But, and if that servant say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens, and to eat and drink, and to be drunken, the day which is talking about spiritually, you know, if you become drunken, if you eat and you drunk, you're full. You know, if you're drunk, you tend to be literally drunk, you know, it changes your mind. So if you're drunk from the wine of this world, you know, you deviate from the doctrine. Said so the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not and did not commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 28. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sorrow punishment suppose you shall he be thought worthy who has trodden underfoot the son of Yahweh and has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an, un un an unholy thing and has done despite unto the spirit of grace. So you can't use your liberty as a cloak of maliciousness. That's right. Verse 30, for we know that for we know him that has said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. That's right. That's the judgment is kind of coming upon those, you know, who <clears throat> you know forsook the Lord, basically. Right? And basically turn back to this world. He's basically saying you want him to go back on the cross again. Alright? And he's did that once and he's not gonna do that again. Syrah chapter 28 verse 7 I'll start verse 6 it says remember thy end and let enmity cease remember corruption and death and abide in the commandments because the wages of sin is death it says remember the commandments and bear no malice to thy neighbour remember the covenant of the highest and wink at ignorance abstain from strife and thou shalt diminish thy sins for a furious man will kindle strife so that's where there's a lot of a lot of the conduct of Jake can be prevented by simply applying the wisdom of these scriptures to your life. The amount of times, like um, Boondocks, they talk about a ninja moment. You know, it's comedy, it's a cartoon, but there's a lot of truth, there's a lot of social commentary in that. You know, Jake has so much pride that he can't have his, his shoe stepped on without saying, oh, no, no problem, brother, I'll wipe it off. You know, it has to be a battle of ego. But, you know, E can roll over you, your foot with a tank and you say, oh, sorry, <laughs> my, I didn't mean to put my foot there, you know. I'm not saying that you should, you should, it says agree with an adversary quickly, but it's just the consistency, it's the hypocrisy that I'm pointing out there. You, know, you should be, if possible, be at peace with all men. That's what the scriptures say. But you want to be at peace with them that do you really wrong and to your brother. You, know, you don't want to have anything to do with, with peace. You, know, you don't even want to think about that word around your brother. You know, that's Jake, that's a... That's a a sign of a destroyed people if ever we saw me see me but that's why Babylon has to go man it's yeah. programmed our people to a point of beyond destruction and you will be sold to the nations until you be destroyed yeah but we weren't altogether destroyed <laughs> you're sold to the, the nations not for your destruction yeah, but, but because you provoked the, the heavenly fire to wrath ultimately we were destroyed but we weren't destroyed yeah, and that's Jake speak we were destroyed as in our culture, our nationality, our identity, our heritage, our willingness to follow the commandments, our understanding of us as a nation, nationhood, you know, value to, to your people, providing, protecting, you know, all of these, all of these ideas go out the window because we've been Babylonianized. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 35. To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. 
the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants when he seeth that their power is gone. There is none shut up or left. And he shall say, Where are their gods, their rock, in whom they trusted? He says that in Psalm 115. That they will say, Well, where is your God? Our God is in heaven, he has done whatsoever he has pleased. Because we provoke the heavenly father to God. We've been Babylonianized, Edomized beyond belief. Well, guess what? We've been given the keys. We've been given the seeds. You know, to have everything, to grow up from there. But again, a lot of Jake doesn't want to do the, you know, do the study. He's happy to be, you know, a content slave. Best slave money never had to buy. So to have to buy at one point. This is Jeremiah 15, 18. It said, Therefore, thus saith Yahweh of hosts, the, the God of Israel, Behold, I will punish the king of Babylon and his land as I have punished the king of Assyria. And a lot of things in Jeremiah 50, Jeremiah 51 are unfulfilled. Now, certain, things in Jer certain things in Jeremiah about Babylon have been fulfilled, but ancient Babylon never went out by fire. You know, Magog and Gog didn't shoot nukes on the ancient Babylon. But guess what? It's coming. It's coming. It even talks about the ten horns. So the ten kings. You know, the EU nations will actually be shooting far and Babylon the Great as well. You know, all of this inward strife shall uh, Satan be divided against Satan. How shall this kingdom stand? Egyptian against Egyptian. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Isaiah 19. The people be bearing no. What does it say? The power of their actions shall stand in their hands. No, not, not. What does it say? Not, not. It doesn't say not not. Basically, they should not regard their kings or princes. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, the, yeah, the power of their actions will stand in their hands. Yeah, so they're not going to be looking. Oh, is it against the law or not? It's going to get to a point where it's so desperate, you know, due to famine, inflation, that's right. Because earthquakes. They, yeah, they cast out their gold and silver in the streets as well. Right. Yeah, and, the, and Gog and Magog. What does it say about them? They will not regard silver or gold. <laughs> so you're going to have some people that are unbribable. You know, some people that are reckless, lawless. And these are the times we're moving into. You know, Jake just wants to sunbathe. There's nothing wrong with sunbathing. But there is a lot wrong with not taking heed to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Isaiah chapter 14 verse 24. The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purposed, so shall it stand. That will break the Assyrian in my land, the modern modern day Assyrian, right? The Edomites. And upon my mountains, tread him underfoot. Then shall his yoke depart from off them, and his burden depart from off their shoulders. This is the purpose that is purposed upon the whole earth. And this is the hand that is stretched out upon all the nations. Right? So the Lord of hosts shall purpose it and he shall dis disannul it and his hand is stretched out and he shall turn it back. That's right. So, so, it's like it's so, so yeah, so the Lord's pronounced judgment upon Babylon the Great because there's no heed in that place, which is America. Okay. And there's no turning back the judgment. Okay, there's, the Lord's not going back on his words. Okay. You can see that it's circling the drain anyway. Alright, depression at an all time high. You know, all sorts of wickedness being taught in these schools these children, you know, like the alphabet and the transformer agenda. Alright. The myth in the in the city is going as well. Inflation, hyperinflation. Okay. So Babylon the Great has run its course and it's time that it gets uh, put down for good and forever. So second is chapter sixteen and verse three it says the sun is sword is sent upon you and who may turn it back? A fire is sent among you and who may quench it? Plagues are sent unto you, and what is he that may drive them away? May any man drive away an hungry lion in the wood, or may anyone quench, quench the fire in stubble, and it begin to burn. May one again, may one turn again the arrow that is shot of a mighty archer. The mighty Lord sendeth the plagues, and who is he that can drive them away? You know, so once the Lord has purpose, once the Lord has got in his heart, you're not going to change that. You're not going to change that. As I said, the Lord is not a man that he may repent. A man that is, should lie, neither the son of man that he may repent. 
You know, there's certain times you read, all right, it repented the Lord, and it grieved the Lord, you know, but ultimately that's of his decree. You know, certain things are set up, like uh, Moses pleading with him that he wouldn't destroy the Israelites altogether. That was all according to his decree. You know, don't get it twisted. You know, but once the Lord's purpose, you're not going to turn it back. The Lord's purpose to destroy Babylon the Great. The Lord has purposed to have certain men, you know, bring out this gospel in a frequent manner, in a diligent manner, and you can't do anything against it. You, know, you can't, you can, you can do whatever you want, but it will be in line with the Lord's decree, the Lord's will, That's right. and what has been predestinated from before creation was put into effect, at least in the physical that is. That's right, because there's nothing you can do against the truth before the truth. That applies to your vocabs. Sam Shimon's Sam Shalom Proverbs chapter 21 verse 30 There is no wisdom, no understanding, no counsel against the Lord That's right There are no plans that these people have Nothing that they can do to, to try and overthrow What the Lord is about to, to do Even the Haragma, they want everyone in the earth to get that There's not, there's not going to be a chance that you'll get every single one in the world to get that You'll cause all, small and great but then what does it say? Whoever has it not, you know, won't be able to buy and sell. So there's going to be some who won't be able to, ha they won't have it, sorry. They won't be able to buy and sell. That's so right. at the same point, the Heavenly Father said, Ye shall be hungry, but my servants shall eat. And ye shall be thirsty, but my servants shall drink. So that's what we trust in. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21. There are many devices in a man's heart, in a mind. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Rashai, that shall stand. So, yeah. Acts chapter 5 verse 39. For if it be of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, you cannot overthrow it. Lest happily he be found even to fight against Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. But guess what? If it's against the Heavenly Father, you will throw it down. This is Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 35. So the sword is upon the Chaldeans, saith Yahweh and upon the inhabitants of Babylon, and upon her princes, and upon her wise men. A sword is upon the liars, and they shall dope. A sword is upon her mighty men, and they shall be dismayed. A sword is upon their horses, and upon their chariots, and upon all the mingled people that are in the midst of her. And they shall become as a woman, sorry, and they shall become as women. A sword is upon her treasures, and they shall be robbed. He even says that in uh, Isaiah 19, Egypt should be like unto women. It shows you it's the same event. As you know, hints at it, but it is the same event. So verse 38, it says, The drought is upon her waters, and they shall be dried up. For it is the land of graven images, and they are mad upon their idols. It says that in uh, Isaiah 13, sorry, Isaiah 19, that their idols shall be melt, idols shall melt in the midst. Verse 39, Therefore the wild beasts of the desert, uh, with the wild beasts of the island shall dwell there, and the owls shall dwell therein, and it shall no more be inhabited forever. Neither should it be dwelt in from generation to generation. As the Most High overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and the neighbor cities thereof, saith Yahweh, so shall no man abide there, neither shall any son of man dwell therein. That shows you Babylon is not going to become, you know, a new haven. Like you had someone come up on the comment board, you know, well, Bob, yeah, America is the true promised land, and we're going to get that back, and they keep knowing that. Now that's going to be a done out land. It's going to be there as a memorial. Uh, you'll be showing your, your grandchildren, their, their grandchildren. Tell me about the Edomites, please. You know? Well, son. You know, it's going to be, a, it's going to be a, a physical reminder. You know? And it says they shall be as though they had not been. There's not going to be a great Edomitic influence in the kingdom. You know, you're not going to have the, the new Hellenization that they've managed to pick up in these times since the Renaissance. No, you're not going to have that running rampant. That's insane. No, you're going to have the ways of Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai put to the forefront, taught, you know, priested, ministered, and it's going to be enforced. And from there, you'll see a great rejoicing you know, among all these nations, truly. Again, as much as we talk about the judgment, it says, when the rights and authority, the people rejoice. When the wicked birth, will the people mourn. You know? Isaiah chapter 19 verse 1 The burden of Egypt, behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud which represents a chariot and shall come into Egypt and the idols of Egypt shall be moved in his presence 
and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. Again, Babylon the Great. So saying, why, why, where is that Egypt? Where is that Egypt? This is Revelation chapter 11 and verse 8. It says, and their dead bodies, which lines up with Ezekiel 37, are spiritually dead bodies. It says, because he that, one, he that wanders out the way of understanding, let him in the congregation of the dead. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Now you can see why it's called Sodom, where the main you know, pushing force for that agenda is going forth from Egypt, where we're in bondage, captivity. You know, Exodus 22, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So Egypt is synonymous with bondage, but this is the, the, the final land of captivity for Jay, in terms of an empire. So that's why it's called Egypt. That's how you know that this is what we're reading here is speaking about Babylon the Great, so called the United States of America. That's right, and the deliverance from this Egypt is going to far surpass the deliverance oh, yeah. of ancient Egypt. Okay. Uh, uh, Jeremiah 16 and 15 talks about it shall no more be said, uh, the, the Lord liveth which brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but the Lord liveth which brought the children of Israel out of the land of the north and all the lands where he, he has scattered them. You know, so it shows that this new. Now, deliverance is going to far surpass that of ancient Egypt, as the brother said. Jeremiah 23 and 7 says the same thing as well. Isaiah chapter 19, verse 2. And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, and they shall fight everyone against his brother, and everyone against his neighbor, city against city, and kingdom against kingdom. That's right. And that's why you have uh, you know, these different factions in America, man, that's, that's against one another. Okay, because you can have class wars and race wars, mm -hmm. things like that, civil wars within within America. And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the council thereof, and they shall seek to the idols and to the charmers and to them that have familiar spirits, and to the wizards. See, because why? Because they're not a true land of you know so-called Christian principle. That is not their gods. That's the gods that they profess outwardly. Behind the scenes, they are, they are not the gods that are worshipped and reverence. There's many different changes you would see in the day-to-day -day happenings in Babylon the Great. If the true gods, or the true god that was worshipped is the Heavenly Father Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shah. Not our idolatry, not our witchcraft. You will see these things, man. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 19. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that are familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not our people seek unto their power, for, their, for the living, to the dead? Has right. a nation changed their gods? <laughs> and their fools, ultimately, because it changes the mood. Yeah. Verse 20, To the law and to this testimony, they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. That's right. So the way that we're the devil for bringing it out of the word, the testimony, the testimony of Yahweh the spirit of prophecy, going into this saying this has happened, this hasn't happened, you can prove this, you can see this here. And we're, we're wicked, but they're righteous for just going, yeah, but it's about how you feel. <laughs> well, I think this, I believe this. I opinion. just feel like... <laughs> That's what, you know, Egypt has already become like unto women, to some degree. That's right. That's why you seek out the book of the Lord, the Bible, and read. All right. You don't say seek out your heart. <laughs> Believe what you want. Because the heart is desperately wicked, wicked among. Deceitful above yeah, all things and it. desperately wicked. Who can know it? <laughs> I just know in my heart. I just feel like it's a feeling I have in my heart. I remember I was all up on Instagram, and you, you know you can have them poll things. So mm. I said, what is love? I said, is it keeping the commandments? Is it a feeling in my heart? Or is it just knowing and going to a church where you listen to your pastor, everything he says? No one clicked the first one. You know, but a couple, a couple, a good seven or eight people on each of the second two. You know, just showing these are, these are, the, you know, your hardcore Christians, you know. <laughs> posting the, your scriptures on their stories. But the Bible is mocked, you know, among the people of the world. Because no, any, anyone that pretends to follow it, you know, clearly holds no, you know, reverence of it. You can't, you can't get away with that with, with Islam, for example. 
you know, they, they reverence their book, no, no one disrespects it, but Christians have made Christianity a mockery, and you see a lot of famous people, you know, acknowledge that. That's why a lot of people go to, a lot of people that are into the Abrahamic, you know, principles, the, the values that are in this book, they tend to head towards, you know, Islam, which that is idolatry. That's another God. That is not the God of the book. That's not the God of our book. That's not the God of Israel, you know. But a lot of people head towards that, the beard, you know, the modest dress, the woman being in order. These are, these are biblical principles, you know, but a lot of people that profess Christianity, they don't hold to these principles, so the book itself is disregarded, disrespected. And when really you need to hear the truth, exactly. No one's bringing out this scripture like the Israelites are, and that's what's you know, messing everyone's head up. And confounding these people, yeah. That's it, the weak things that are, so we're, we're not, you know, as a nation, as individuals, you know, we are not these big organizations, we don't have all this funding, like, you know, and we can still confound you in a simple scripture, you know? No, you, no one can mess with, the, no, no one can mess with the Israelites on prophecy, man. You can't. We take you a couple places, we might take you Isaiah 61, we might take you the book of Obadiah, that's just to name a few. That's just to, you know, if we really want to, Toy around cat and mouse, you know, we'll take you some place, all right, Gentiles and this. But if we really want to drown you in some living waters, we'll take you into prophecy, you know. All jokes aside, none of these, you know, religious bodies can mess with the Israelites on prophecy. Try it. Second epistle of Peter, chapter 1, verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. That's right. So there's only one truth of understanding, right? The scriptures and the prophecies, right? So there's no, oh, well, I interpret a prophecy this way, so... I just go. feel... <laughs> that's right. I just feel it's going to happen this way, so it's, this is how it's going to be. No, that's wrong. I just feel like I can take the MOTB and I can take it out of the last minute because I'm so smart. Because I'm so, I just surpass everyone else. That's the, that's the pride demon. That's the pride demon. Verse 21, for the prophecy came not in time, in old time by the will of man, but holy men of Yahweh, because they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Right. It's always been so. Exactly. So it wasn't just something that they came up of with their own accord. Okay. So it was set apart, made holy, to speak of to speak these prophecies by the Holy Spirit. And you say something along the lines to the to the impure is nothing pure, to the defiled is nothing, you know, undefiled. So you know, certain people they, they they're never gonna accept you can give it you can show them a, a perfect diamond. No one's ever touched it after it's been refined, it's been clean. No, it's dirty, I can still see this on it, I can still see it. You've always got the people, man. Luke 1 and 71, oh, sorry, Luke 1 and 67 says, And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up and honored salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. You know, so even from the time of Adam, you know, even from Genesis 1, even from all of these, from before this, you've had, you've had the, the predetermination of it. You've always had the, the prophets, man. You've always had them that are saying, this is right, this is wrong, this is about to happen. They've always had prophecy. That's the one thing that separates this truth from all these other doctrines. All right, the, the book of the dead, you're from Kemet, cool. What's the prophecy? How do you know? Well, well, how do you know? All right. Deuteronomy 28, this, this, that, this. Jeremiah, this, this, this. Go through it all. Titus chapter 1, verse 15. Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving, is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. There you go. You got man that don't believe. Are the 100% truth, that's a stumbling block for people. Go right. It's the 100% truth ever on the earth. No. 
Right, did you always try to have 100% truth? Oh, yeah, yes. Did he teach it so much? Yeah. Did they ever go out there? What? No. Well, yeah. They don't know, man. See, well, when did it fizzle out of the earth? When did the understanding come? Well, yeah, yeah. Could it ever be? Yeah. When you, we can read in the scripture, the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. You know, uh, the idea of a body, that, that stresses people out. But you all, you don't teach different things to each other, it's confusing. <laughs> no, it's not. It speaks, speaks on speaking the same thing. So one of the camps, or one of the bodies has to be right. You can't just be a single ninja walking around, you know, looking for, looking for trouble, looking for debates, thinking you're... When it says one mind, it doesn't mean you're one mind, <laughs> you're a singular mind. You know, it's talking about a body believing the same thing as one mind. As the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, the Son of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, they're two different entities, but they have the same belief, you know, they have the same mindset, they think the same. They believe in the law. The law is the objective moral compass, you know, and they both buy into that. That's what it means, one mind, speaking the same thing. Probably get a couple more. So Hebrews chapter ten, verse twenty-two says, "Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water." Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful to that promised. And let us consider one another to, pro to provoke unto love and to good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. But exhorting one another is so much the more as you see the day approaching. That's right. That means the closer we get, the more on fire we should be. But knowing the time that now is a high time to wake up our sleep. Huh? Yeah. Is it on? Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. And so we pray that's been edifying. Double honor to the apostles and elders of great millstone that rule well. May be the word and doctrine. Shalom to the elect to the nation of Israel. All praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rukha Kodash. Shalom. Shalom.